welcome back to the channel. Today I'm creating my 2024 build a journal setup, which includes some goal setting pages, threads for planning for the new year, and plenty of trackers. For this year, I chose this cute brown Archer and Olive notebook that has 192 pages, so it will definitely be enough for me for the whole year. I started this setup with a key page, and if you're new to bullet journaling, the key page is basically a list of all the different symbols that you use in your monthly, weekly and daily logs. Some people also use a color code so that, for example, work-related tasks are marked in a different color than home-related tasks. But I've never actually used one in my bullet journal, but I know it works really well for some. I got this lined notepad from Archer & Olive's September subscription box and I decided to use them in this setup. First I cut one of the papers to the right size and then I glued it onto the page. I wrote the header at the top and decorated it with a couple of flowers. I kept the decorations very minimal throughout the setup, so I drew these flowers and some leaves but mainly focused on making the layouts functional. Next to the key page, I made a really simple cover page that says 2024, a new chapter begins. And I also drew two branches on both sides of the little quote for decoration. By the way, on this page, you can see all the colors that I used in this setup. So a dark blue color, a light grayish blue, a light brown and just a little bit of gold. Next we are moving on to the goals page, where I'm going to be writing down all the goals that I have for the upcoming year. This year I decided to break down my goals into smaller parts, rather than only focusing on the biggest ones. So I started by writing the header at the top of the page, and then created these boxes for personal goals, health goals, creative goals, and financial goals. And since there will be quite a few goals here, I left the page mostly empty. One of the boxes accidentally ended up being too small, but fortunately it was easy to fix. On the page next to this one, I decided to create a page where I'll write down the achievements I make throughout the year. I haven't included this kind of a page in my setup before, but I thought it would be nice to also celebrate the smaller achievements during the year. And this page is perfect just for that. I wrote the title in my simple cursive handwriting that I use all the time. And then I outlined this rectangular area with washi tape. And I was thinking of making this like a border of decorations and then write the achievements in the center. And thinking back, outlining the center might not have been really necessary, but I wanted the edges to be extra sharp. I alternated between the dark blue flowers and the grayish blue branches, and I also left a lot of white space between the doodles so that this page wouldn't end up too busy. I finished this off with some golden dots and then moved on to the next spread, which is my future log. I decided not to name this spread because I know what it is and I wanted to leave as much space as possible for the different events and tasks. I fitted all 12 months on the same spread, 
since I usually don't have a lot to write down in my future log. I started by writing the numbers of the month using the dark blue pen and then wrote the first three letters of each month next to the numbers. I used the light brown or green color zebra mite liner as a background for the weekdays and the week numbers to make them stand out a bit better from the actual calendar. I wrote all the mini calendars for the correct months and you'll probably notice that I cut out a lot of these repetitive parts when I was editing a video. Finally I decided to separate the columns with lines and I did it using a black fine liner at first but actually later I returned to this page and used the light grayish blue acrylic of pen instead. And I used that same pen to cross out extra days from each mini calendar as well. On the next spread I created two trackers. So the first one is my health tracker and I started by writing the header with the dark blue acrylic of pen and added small doodles next to it as decoration. Then I drew the actual tracker going across both of these pages and in this tracker each day of the year has its own little square and each row represents a month. I wrote the first letter of each month on the left side of the box and above both boxes I wrote the numbers from 1 to 31. I crossed out the extra days from February, April, June, September and November and then I created a color code on the right side of the boxes. I chose four colors from my calligraph pens that match the color palettes and I decided to use these different pens simply because they have finer tips and it makes it a bit easier to color in the squares. Under this health tracker I'm creating my important tasks tracker and I used to call this a when did I last tracker but now I just wanted to simplify the name a bit. So this tracker is going to be for my important tasks that happen throughout the year but not necessarily every week. Under the header I drew a rectangle for the week numbers and then another rectangle for the tasks. And since all 52 weeks of the year wouldn't fit in a single row, I decided to put the weeks and the trackers in two rows. So the first row is for weeks from 1 to 26, and the next row is for weeks from 27 to 52. And also this tracker goes across both pages of the spread, so that there would be space for the actual tasks on the left side of the tracker. And here you can see me flipping back to my future lock and going over the black lines with the grayish blue acrylic of pen. And I know it is a small change, but I think the spread looks softer this way and also it fits better with the other spreads. The next spread I'm creating is my bucket list for 2024, but since I'm turning 30 in August, I decided to call it 30 before 30. This layout is a really simple one, so under the header in the middle of the page vertically, I drew a tall box that is 30 dotry spaces tall and 4 dotry spaces wide. And then I divided it into 30 little squares. 
on both sides of this I'm going to be writing down things I want to do before turning 30 and when I do a thing from this bucket list I'll color in that box. Next to my bucket list I created a I want to watch page. So in my last year's setup I didn't have this kind of a page but during the year I noticed that I really needed a space to write down interesting movies and TV shows or otherwise I would just forget about them. So I decided to include this page to this new setup. I divided the page into two sections. So I have the movies I want to watch at the top and the TV shows under it. This time I used the light brown acrylograph pen for the headers and I really wanted to add something more than just a list to this page. So I decided to draw these old film strips for the movie section and some TV screens for the TV shows. We are moving on to my reading log, which is also a new spread for this year. I have created similar pages in my previous setups, so I decided to include it again this year. I started by gluing two pages in the center of the spread from that same notepad that I used on the key page. And after that, I used some letter stickers for the header. Both these stickers and all the washi tapes that I'm using on this spread are from the same Archer and Olive subscription box from September. The theme in that box was books, so these tapes and stickers are just perfect for this kind of a spread. Under the header I wrote smaller headers for the dates I finished reading the book, as well as the title and the author of the book. At the bottom of the page I added some washi tape that has these book spines and it kind of looks like a mini bookshelf which I thought was really cute. Also I thought I'd use the star washi tape to make book reviews to the sides. Next we are moving on to my this year's financial trackers and the first one is my 2024 financial overview spread. I've mentioned before that I use both my bullet journals financial pages and also Google Sheets and in fact this is one of those spreads that I have in both digital format and also in my bullet journal. I just like having the entire year's overview in my bullet journal as well, just because it's easier to check something from it, but basically all the calculations happen in my Google Sheets. Anyway, I started this spread by writing the header at the top and adding a few small doodles around it. Since this page will be full of numbers, I try to keep it as simple as clear as possible. Under the header I wrote the numbers for the months from 1 to 12 and then began drawing these separate boxes for income and expenses. I also highlighted every other row in these boxes to make it a bit easier to stay on the right line. On the left side of the boxes I wrote the headers, so the first box is for my different income sources, the next box is for my expenses in the needs category and under that are my wants category expenses. My categories are mostly the same as the previous year, except that I decided to add a separate category for our wedding and a new category for celebrations. And I also numbered all my categories so that it's easier to see which category each expense belongs to on my monthly pages. The 
the last box is for the final breakdown between income, expenses and savings. And at the bottom of this spread, I decided to include a small monthly tracker to see if I stayed in my budget or not. I know that this might feel kinda intense for some people, but I really love budgeting and tracking my finances, so this is one of my favorite spreads to create and fill in every year. We are continuing with the financial trackers, so next I created a tracker for my bills. This is really useful when not all bills come monthly, but for example every other month or four times a year. I use this when I'm planning my budget for the next month and trying to estimate how much money I need to have for different bills and other payments. Under the header I just wrote the initials of the months and left some space on the right side for the bills. I use this tracker by drawing a circle for the month when I know the bill is coming and then I'll fill in the circle once I've paid it. I wasn't sure how many rows I would need for this tracker, so I left the bottom of the page empty so that I can add new bills on this list during the year. The last tracker is my savings tracker for the year 2024. I have a few different saving goals for the upcoming year, so I decided to create this basic tracker to track my progress with these savings. I made the tracker so that each row corresponds to a hundred euros in my savings and the maximum height of one bar is 1500 euros. If any of my saving goals are over that amount, I'll just draw a new bar next to it. At the bottom of this tracker I left space to write down the balance of my savings account and my wedding savings. And I use this space if I use money from my savings during the year so that I can keep track of how much is left in the savings accounts. And that finishes off my new 2024 bullet journal setup. I'm so excited to start using this new bullet journal and all these trackers and I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video and would like to see more bullet journaling videos from me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, I'd love to hear which pages you are going to include in your setup or just come say hi in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!